I would like to see Africa's profile being enhanced globally. While this is a great opportunity to showcase Africa's potential for growth, it's also an opportunity to learn from past successful investments in the public-private space. We need to show the world that Africa can become a growth engine of the world. Tangible actions are what we need from this forum. Fortunately, Africa has weathered this particular storm better than the Western world. Africa's resilience demonstrates that there is an opportunity for the world to invest in the continent and reap acceptable rewards. According to the IMF's latest growth forecasts, 24 of the world's 50 fastest growing economies over the next five years will be on the African continent. These economies are projected to grow at average rates above 5% per annum. I believe that as Africa's growth continues, we will begin to emerge as an increasingly important market and investment destination for the growing list of emerging market multinational companies. Research into development economics has demonstrated that there is no silver bullet when it comes to growth takeoffs. In particular, China's growth experience has generally turned most theories on their heads. Countries that have been most successful in improving their growth performance have followed a broad range of policies. However, there are some first order principles of economic policy that all successful countries have more or less adhered to. These include the maintenance of macroeconomic stability, a desire to integrate into the world economy, effective protection in terms of property rights and contract enforcement, the maintenance of social cohesion and political stability driven by a more inclusive political and economic environment, and of course effective governance. The barriers to growth in Africa largely relate to the absence of some of the first order principles of economic policy, such as the maintenance of macroeconomic stability, a desire to integrate into the world economy, effective protection in terms of property rights and contract enforcement, and the maintenance of social cohesion and political stability. To these we can add education. Although the quantitative indicators of education levels in Africa have improved, they continue to lag other developing regions. More than 75% of the African countries covered in the World Economic Forum Competitiveness Report are still in the bottom quartile on school enrollment from primary through to tertiary level. Africa has approximately 10% of the world's oil and gas reserves. An even larger proportion of the world's new discoveries have been in Africa. We also have huge hydroelectric potential. To unlock this, we need effective partnerships between governments and the private sector. Governments to provide attractive investment climate and infrastructure. Private sector to bring technologies, expertise and capital. It is critical to the success of these that the private sector transfers technology, creates capacity and uplifts communities as part of the process.